Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and today we are in the kitchen. Today is actually my dad's birthday and so I thought we'd come into the kitchen and make him a couple of treats. So today I'm making him ham and cheese Hot Pockets from scratch and I'm also making um, Guinness mocha buttercream cupcakes. Um, both of these recipes are from Sally's Baking Addiction. I've mentioned her several times um, on my channel. I love her recipes. I like um, I, I like actually reading the whole thing. I like the way that she speaks and types and explains things and I just really, really enjoy her blog. So um, I'm going to use both of those recipes. Now, if you've been around for a little while, you may have seen my homemade hot, um, excuse me, my homemade Pop-Tart video. Um, people seem to really like that and I have talked a lot about pesticides, herbicides, seed oils, and all of this crap that's in our food that you're purchasing from the grocery store. And on this channel, I want to really encourage you to make a lot of that yourself from scratch at home because not only do you... Um, build experience and confidence in the kitchen, but you also know exactly where your food is coming from and exactly what is in it. And so I wanted to add homemade Hot Pockets to that because Hot Pockets are not great. Um, and if, to be honest with you, they're, I made these once already. I made pizza Hot Pockets for Tom and I um, because I knew I was gonna wanna tweak this recipe a little bit and I am, um, but even so, they're just so much better than the store-bought ones, so much better. The store-bought ones have no flavor and I'm at the point now where I take a bite and I'm like man this tastes like there's a lot of stuff in here like like gross stuff gross ingredients so um, I hope that you enjoy this the cupcakes are gonna be a little bit of a bonus um, who doesn't love a good baked good I think that they're going to be delicious but the hot pockets I think are really great for this channel so we're gonna start with the hot pockets um, and I've got my stand mixer here, but like always you can hand mix if that's what you need to do I have some water warming on the stove You want one and a third cups warm water and I'm gonna go ahead and get those in my bowl now This water is definitely a little hot Because I was talking while it was on the stove. So I'll put a cup of my hot water And I'll put a third cup cold filtered water and hopefully that'll temper it a bit to that, you wanna add a tablespoon of sugar or honey. I would do one of those two. I wouldn't get too crazy like maple syrup or anything because remember, we're making these for Hot Pockets. I'm going to stir that and try to get that sugar dissolved. The reason we're doing this, you want your water warm and you want um, some sort of sweetener in there because when we put our yeast in here in a moment, it's going to help activate that yeast and kind of wake it up. And the, the sugar gives it something to kind of snack on. So I don't often use thermometers around here. I think you want your water to be like 110 degrees or something. Yeah, between 100 and 110. I do the pinky test. I stick my pinky in it and if it's um, too hot for my pinky, it's too hot for the yeast. And that is a little hot. So I'm just going to leave that for a moment. While we're waiting, I'll tell you about our ingredients. We've got active dry yeast. Um, I've got salt. Oh, this will be a good opportunity for me to talk to you about salt. I finally, finally have Redmond Real Salt in my kitchen. I'm the type where I want, uh, even if I find an ingredient that I want to add to my kitchen, I'm not going to until I use up what I had prior. And so I'm finally out of my regular like Morton's table salt. So I got this from Azure Standard, um, Redmond's Real Salt. They um, are uh, a salt mine in, I think, Utah. Yep, U Redmond, Utah. <laughs> okay, our water is a perfect happy temperature for our yeast. So we want two and a fourth teaspoons of yeast to our um, water sugar mixture here. And I just kind of sprinkle it on top. And now you want to let that sit and activate. And you'll know that your yeast is activated because it will foam up on top. And um, if it does not, and usually it takes somewhere around it depends on the temperature. Um, it usually takes around five minutes for that to happen. Um, and if after 10 minutes nothing has happened, then your yeast is no good and it won't activate and you have to figure something else out. Um, I'm almost done with this packet of yeast. Um, I was going through it like crazy when I was making yeast bread, but I've been making so much sourdough that I actually haven't been using it, which is kind of sad because I also purchased another one pound bag. 
of yeast that I'm just gonna keep in my freezer because it's gonna take me a long time to go through it. Now that I've been using so much sourdough, but um, I keep my yeast in, that I'm using in the fridge and I keep the my um, overflow yeast in the freezer and it'll keep in the freezer for a really long time, so I'm not worried about it. So we're just gonna let this sit for now. Okay, so my yeast is all nice and foamy on top and activated. So now I'm gonna add in some of the other ingredients and that includes two tablespoons of olive oil. Now you really don't wanna skimp on the olive oil because it adds such a wonderful flavor. I could really taste it when I made the Pizza Hot Pockets and um, it really was an excellent addition into the bread proponent of the Hot Pockets. You also want to add in, I think, a teaspoon. Yeah, one teaspoon of salt. Again, this is something that you don't want to skimp on. You definitely want to add the salt because it's just, it adds so much flavor to what would otherwise just be bland bread. And honestly, I don't even, you don't even really have to measure the salt. It doesn't make that big of a difference. It just adds flavor. I'm cooking some eggs for myself back here. If you can hear it. What's the matter? What's going on? Did you hear me set down the olive oil? You're a good guard doggy. Thank you. All right, and then also we're going to add three and a half cups of flour. I'm going to use all-purpose flour here. And I will say that you won't see me be super exact. I know I've said before that um, cooking is an art, baking is a science, and you want to be specific with your ingredients when you're baking. And that's true for most things, but for bread, it's really not. It's really more a matter of feel. Um, and you want the this dough to be um, not too sticky, not too soft. And there's a lot that you can do um, throughout the process to kind of get it right in that sweet spot. So I don't worry too much about it when I'm measuring out ingredients because I'm confident that we'll be able to get it just right. Okay, so we've added all of this to our stand mixer. Now we just want to get this all nice and combined. Okay, you know the dough is ready when it pulls away from the sides and sticks to the hook. So this is actually already in pretty good shape. When I put my fingers on it, it's a little sticky, but it's I've seen way worse. So this is actually not too bad. So the next thing that you wanna do, lightly flour your work surface. And I like to keep the flour right here because this is how we control the dough and get it right where we want it, is this step here. So because I already know this is a little sticky, I'm gonna just very lightly flour the top. And we're gonna knead this. And you pick up a little bit of the flour that's on the counter. You've got the flour that you just added on top there. And uh, usually you can use that to get this right where you want it. If it's sticking to the counter, add a little bit more flour. And eventually you'll end up with a dough that is really nice and soft and supple. It doesn't stick to the counter. It doesn't really stick to your hands. But you really want to stop right when you get to that sweet spot in terms of adding flour because you don't want it to be... Um, too floury and I like to kind of um, as I'm doing this process especially right in the beginning I like to kind of pull apart as I'm kneading because what can happen if you don't is you get the outside feeling the way that you want it and uh, it tricks you into thinking that your dough is good but if you pull it apart you find that it's actually still super sticky and you need to add a little bit more flour so during this kneading process that's kind of what I like to do I like to stretch and fold, which isn't even necessary for this kind of dough, but I like to because it helps me to properly flour it and get the whole thing, the texture that I want it to be. And you're just gonna knead this for, I don't know, a couple minutes, two, three minutes, and until it, it gets to be exactly what you want it to be, which is a nice, soft, supple ball of dough. So at this point, I'm gonna get it up off the counter. And I like to do this with all of my, my doughs. I just like to kind of pull apart and together and fold it kind of down and pinch it into like a seam at the bottom. And this helps me get a really good idea of how sticky it still is. And uh, it also helps it to get in a nice ball shape. And it's still super sticky. So I'm gonna do this one more time. 
And this is what I mean when I'm talking about measuring out your ingredients in your bowl. It really doesn't matter because I always end up e either adding a little bit more flour or adding a little bit more water. Water if it's too dry, flour if it's too sticky. And um, this is really the, the part of the process where I get the dough in that happy place. So I don't worry too much about measuring. And yeah, that's what it needed. And now it feels really nice, really soft. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this a few more times, get it pinched down into a nice ball here. I kind of pinch and twist a little to close that seam I created. And it's beautiful. All right, now we're gonna get a clean bowl, put a splash of olive oil in there. I like to just use my fingers to get the bowl nice and coated in the olive oil. Our beautiful ball of hot pocket dough into that ball. Do a couple more little pinches here. Oh, that feels so beautiful. Doesn't stick to me at all, but it's still really wet. It's not um, super dry. I didn't add too much flour. It's beautiful. So we're gonna get that in the ball. I like to roll it around a little, get it coated in that olive oil. And we're going to let this sit. How long do we sit, let this sit for? 60 to 90 minutes. So what I'm likely going to do is turn my oven on for just a moment, let it heat up for just a second. Not, I think usually it starts at like 100 degrees. I'm just gonna let it heat up for a second and then I'll turn it off and put my bowl in the oven with the oven light on and let it uh, rise in there because it's cold today. I think it's only like 40 degrees outside and so it's not going to rise very quickly. I have to work today. I'm doing this before work so I really need things to be timely here. So I'm going to cover this with a clean towel and I'll get it put in my oven here. I did a lot of looking around when I was trying to decide what I wanted to make for my dad's birthday. First of all, the fact that I wanted to make anything at all. Um, I'm definitely at that point in my homesteading journey where I'm like, yeah, homemade gifts for everybody. <laughs> because I think I have enough skills at this point where I can really pull that off and give good gifts. So the Hot Pockets were a no-brainer, but the I wanted a dessert to go with it. And so I did some searching and I found Guinness chocolate cupcakes with mocha Guinness buttercream. And I think I just try and picture, I'm very like visual. So I pictured myself giving my dad these two items and speaking to him what they were. And like, I'm picturing the expression on his face and I just know it's going to go over really well. So I'm excited about this. I think he's really going to like it. So we're going to go ahead and get started on those while we've got the um, hot pocket dough rising in the oven. So I have Guinness extra stout. I purchased this because when I was at my grocery store, this was the only single that they had. I didn't want to buy a pack because I, I can drink Guinness, but it's not my favorite. Um, this is a bigger bottle. It's 22 fluid ounces, but the recipe calls for one 12 ounce bottle. And she, I actually read what she had to say about this. And she said that um, with her tinkering around with this recipe, she found that cooking the Guinness down on the stove, simmering it down, um, got rid of the extra liquid, but, but ended up with a really concentrated flavor of beer. So that is what we're gonna do as well. Get my bottle opener in here. And so we're just going to, the, however, the reason I'm telling you this is because I have a 22 ounce fluid, uh, 22 ounce bottle of Guinness here and I, I want to be really specific. So my mom got me this as a stocking stuffer. It's this little measuring cup and it's got ounces, uh, teaspoons, tablespoons, milliliters, and ounces if I didn't already say that. Yeah, so um, it goes all the way up to five ounces. So I'm going to put five ounces in here. Oops, <laughs> forgot that it was going to foam up. So it's been a while since I've poured a beer and I forgot that it was gonna foam up so I poured it too fast. But as I was waiting for the foam to dissipate, I had a thought. I was gonna measure out 12 ounces because after it cooks down, you need two third a cup of um, the cooked down beer for the recipe. But I decided that's kind of silly. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour in about half of this and let it cook down for a little while and then I'll just measure out two thirds. The only difference is um, the flavor could potentially be less or more concentrated depending on the ratio, but I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal. It's still gonna taste delicious. So I've got about half the beer here. I'm going to get this on the stove and what does she say to do? Let me just double check. In a small saucepan, bring the Guinness to a boil over medium high heat 
Once boiling, reduce to medium heat and allow to simmer until reduced down to two thirds a cup about 20 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll follow those instructions and instead of uh, waiting for it to reduce down to two thirds cup because I don't know that this ratio will give me that, I'm just gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and I think that that'll work out fine. All right, I still have my Guinness boiling down over here, uh, simmering down. It actually is doing it a lot faster than I thought. You're trying to evaporate off, cook off some of that water to get it to be more concentrated and it already has quite a bit, so that's cool. While that's working, it's got eight more minutes. I want to go ahead and continue on with this. We wanna combine our dry ingredients, which is our flour, cocoa powder, espresso powder, baking soda, and salt. So we want to do one cup of all-purpose flour and I have a separate bowl here. Now, contrary to what I said about the Hot Pocket dough, I want to try and be more specific with my measurements here for the cupcake recipe, especially because I've actually never made these cupcakes before. This is a new recipe for me. So you want half a cup of unsweetened natural cocoa powder, and I'm not sure, oh wait, that's the wrong thing. I'm not sure if this is sweetened or not. I can't remember. I remember that I got this from Azure and I put it in this container and I threw the original packaging away. I should have cut it out and taped it on here. Yeah, I think that's unsweetened. So we want half a cup of that. Maybe not the best container. I'm still in the process. Now that I've been building up my pantry and have been keeping uh, bulk ingredients um, and kind of uh, trying to have a working kitchen, as you will, I am on the journey of trying to source um, containers for all of my stuff because I've got quite a bit of, of ingredient now um, and I need something to put them all in. So I'm not sure that this will stay in here, but it's, it's in here for now. So this recipe calls for espresso powder, which I'm really excited for. I think it's gonna add a really, really yummy flavor to this, but I could not find espresso powder at my store. So I got instant espresso coffee. I did read in the comments that somebody else used that and their um, cupcakes turned out fine. So we're gonna go for it and hope for the best. And it calls for one and a half teaspoons of that. And I believe we're gonna use more of this later for the frosting. I need three fourths teaspoon of baking soda. I'm almost out, I'm almost done with this box that I've been, it's taking me forever because I bought some from Azure that I've been wanting to use, but it's taking me forever to get through this box of baking soda. And then lastly, we want a fourth a teaspoon of salt. And anytime a recipe tells me to add salt, I do it because I have learned that it adds so much valuable flavor to whatever it is you're making. Salt really helps balance things out. So I'm just gonna get all of this gently whisked together. You wanna be careful whisking this because that cocoa powder could just go bananas on you and I don't wanna have a cloud so I'm going to very gently whisk this together. Okay, and then I'm just gonna set this aside. This recipe actually doesn't even say to use a stand mixer, but I already have my stand mixer out, so I might as well make my life easier. I rinsed it after making the dough, and now I believe we're mixing together, we're doing the oil, brown sugar, egg, sour cream, vanilla. So let's go back up here. So this says, half a cup plus one tablespoon of vegetable or canola oil. I am passionately opposed to both of those things. So I thought about my alternatives here. What am I gonna do? I had originally decided, I had originally decided that I wanted to do avocado oil because the, the, the thing here is, and the reason they chose those to recommend is because they want an oil, the recipe wants an oil, but you don't want something very strongly flavored um, because there are already so many flavors. Vegetable and canola are both fl flavorless more or less. Um, so I considered using olive oil. I don't think I wanna use olive oil. I, I was going to use avocado oil because it's pretty flavorless, but silly me had put an empty bottle back in the cupboard, tricking future me into thinking that there's avocado oil when there's not. Um, so I, I don't have any currently and I discovered that this morning. So I'm not going out to buy avocado oil. So I, my next best choice here is coconut oil and that's what I'm going to use. However, and I'm going to give this disclaimer to my dad, 
these cupcakes are now going to have a slight coconutty flavor because coconut oil is uh, it does have kind of th that essence of coconut present and so um, I'm a little bummed about that however I would much rather take um, the, the, the sacrifice of having these be a little bit coconutty versus feeding my father something with vegetable or canola oil in it. Plus I can't anyway, throughout all of my vegetable oil, but, um, I wouldn't anyway, even if I did still have it because it's terrible for you. And, uh, there are plenty of videos on my channel if you want to learn more about that. So coconut oil it is. So it was one, uh, half a cup plus one tablespoon. So I'm just going to, it's always so hard to tell. So I usually just kind of roughly measure it and then I heat it up in the microwave, and um, then if I need to add more, I will to get to the correct amount. Okay, so I measured slightly above half a cup to account for that extra tablespoon. I'm gonna go ahead and get that poured in here because I want this measuring cup to be used for something else. My um, Guinness timer went off, so it says to measure out half a cup, set half a cup aside and let it cool. Oh man, this worked out. I've got like just enough. Let's see here. Yep, so set aside half a cup, let it cool. And then we need two to two and a half <clears throat> tablespoons with two teaspoons of the espresso powder and that's going to be used in the frosting. So let me get a bowl out. All right, so two teaspoons of espresso powder and then two to two and a half tablespoons of the reduced Guinness. So let me scoop out some of this Guinness. And let's just go for the two and a half just to make sure. Awesome. And I'm just gonna give this a mix, try and get that espresso powder kind of, uh, ooh. Oh, that smells really good. Oh man, these are gonna be so good. Oh, I hope my dad loves them. Yeah, that is, that smells amazing. Okay, I'm just gonna set this aside over here. This is gonna be used for the cupcakes. While I'm letting the Guinness beer cool, we've got, we've got our oil, we need brown sugar. How much brown sugar? One cup, packed. I just wanted to show you this. I did uh, quite a bit last night trying to get everything prepared for today. Since I do have to work today, I wanted this to go smoothly. So I didn't have any brown sugar. So what I did was I put some sh regular sugar in a container and I mixed in uh, just some, I'm almost out of molasses. So I didn't have that much. And as you can see here, you can kind of see some little pieces of molasses where I didn't mix it in all the way um, because I just did this before bed last night. So this is a very, very light, very light brown sugar. But you know what? That's okay. It all, all of this is just for flavor. It's not necessarily for the overall success of the recipe. These are just flavor additives and there is molasses in here. So I still think that these are gonna taste really good even with it being a lighter brown sugar. So that's nice and packed, one cup, putting it in my mixer. Two eggs, very blessed. These are eggs from my girls, whoops. Three fourths cup of full fat sour cream. Here I have organic or um, organic Organic Valley, <laughs> rich and creamy sour cream. And you want, oh, hello, three fourths cup of that. I love it when baked goods have sour cream in them. It always makes them so moist and delicious. I have a coffee cake um, recipe that I make with sour cream and it is just the best. Oh, I love baked goods with sour cream. All right, get this in here. Um, and then lastly, pure vanilla extract. Like I always say, measure with your heart. And what else? I think that might be all for now. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. My little rooster is crowing downstairs. Sour cream vanilla. And we're going to, it says whisk. I'm gonna use my stand mixer and we're gonna get this all combined until it's nice and smooth. Okay, I'm preheating my oven to 350. I actually think I was supposed to do that a little while ago, but here we are. All right, so now, by the way, I still have my dough hook, which is not exactly the best, but I don't feel like finding my whisk attachment. So 
we are gonna go ahead and add our dry ingredients in here. And I am going to, once they're all in here, give it a little bit of a whisk with this actual whisk before I turn my stand mixer on. Otherwise, like I said, I'm gonna have a cloud of cocoa powder in my kitchen and I'd rather not. So we're gonna just mix that together a little, which maybe with my dough hook it wouldn't be as severe, but I don't feel like dealing with it. Gonna get this mixed together. Okay, it says not to over mix, so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and add in my Guinness, which is still pretty warm. I'm gonna add it in really slowly because I think the concern here is that I don't want the warm Guinness to cook the egg. So I'm gonna add it in just a, a light stream, and as soon as I have it all combined, I'm gonna stop because you don't wanna overmix the dough. Okay, now here's what I wanna do. I've got my muffin tin, I've got my liners in here. The, this um, cookie, or this cupcake batter is gonna be very runny. It says that in her recipe, and mine is very runny. So I'm going to take my whisk and I want to run along the sides here and just really make sure that I've got every little bit of flour and cocoa powder. I want everything to be in here. I don't want to miss anything. Get everything on the bottom. Make sure it's all in here. And then she says to fill the muffin tins um, two thirds of the way full. And anytime there's a specific recommendation like that, I always follow it. I don't know how these cupcakes are gonna behave. I don't know what the rise is like on these. So I wanna make sure that I, you know, do what I can to make sure that I'm following the recipe. So the way I usually do it, I've got this little like gravy ladle and I usually just get in here and scoop it in like this. And that way I have pretty good control over how much goes in. Okay, and then just because I'm a little OCD, I do like to go through <clears throat> and just clean these up, clean this up a little bit. All right, perfect timing. My oven is preheated. Let's see. So fill two thirds of the way full. Bake for 19 to 22 minutes. Don't over bake, this will dry them out. So I'm actually gonna check these at 15 minutes because my oven usually runs hot and we'll see where we're at. All right, now we're at the part where this is gonna get a little hairy. This is where I kind of wanted to change the recipe. I've got you zoomed in a little bit because I want you to be able to see my work surface here. We're gonna head back to the Hot Pockets. I've got um, the cupcakes have seven minutes left and then we'll check on those, but for now I really wanna think about these Hot Pockets. So I've got my surface, it's still clean here. I gave it another quick wipe. I want to add just a sprinkle of flour, just to really keep anything from sticking, but we're pretty much done with that part of this. But I just like to add just a little, just to give me some insurance that these won't stick. And now we're gonna turn our dough, which by the way, has risen, but it's not double, but I gotta get a move on with this, so here we are. I'm gonna turn that out here. Oh, oh, beautiful. I love working with dough. I love it so much. So I'm just going to kind of roughly shape this back into kind of a round shape here. And then I'm going to cut it in half. And you want eight pieces of dough. So cut it in half and then cut each half into four. Now here's where the recipe differs. She um, flattens it out. She uses a rolling pin to make them almost into like, like kind of rounded rectangles and she'll just fold it over itself to make almost like a calzone shaped pocket. I did not like that because I found where the fold was, was very thick and just way too much bread, not enough filling. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna take each um, of the eight pieces, cut them in half again to have 16 pieces. I wanna roll them flat as I can possibly get them, like super, 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 super flat. And I want to um, have them be 
kind of rectangle shape like a hot pocket put all of my toppings and then I want to lay the other rectangle shape on top and full, uh, use my fork to create a crease all around the entire um, uh, four sides of the Hot Pocket, if that makes sense. I think that's how I want to try it this time because I did not really like folding them over. So let me move my dough all to the side here and we'll just start with one of these and go from there. So because this is such a small piece of dough, I'm not expecting these to be huge. I'm okay with that. Um, I'd rather have them be smaller, but more enjoyable than bigger and just, and Tom and I both agree, they had they were way too, too bready, too much dough. Well, and look at this, even as I'm already starting to roll this out, I'm seeing that this is huge. <laughs> so I don't even think they're gonna be that small. I think it's fine. I think I may even end up taking my pizza cutter, just like we did with the um, pop tarts and I may even trim it out so that it's the size and the shape that I want it to be. All right, so let's try this. Let me, so if you can't tell, I used this last time. <laughs> and so I'm just going to set this aside here. I'm going to get my pizza cutter. Where are you? And kind of trim out the size and shape that I'm looking for. Get all this extra out of the way. Wait, I'm sure we can probably go back at the end and use the extras to make another one. And then I'm gonna try to lift this up. Yeah, hmm. I didn't really keep it shaped, did it? I'm just testing this out. I've not done it this way. I'm just trying to see what I can make happen here to make these look a little better. I tried really hard to source a, um, uh, find a ham that I was happy with in terms of like how it was raised, organic, pasture raised, or at least GMO fed, uh, non-GMO fed, and I couldn't really find anything. So I ended up this is a birthday present. It's a treat. I ended up just going with a black forest ham, uncured. It smells really good. Deli meat is notoriously not good for you, but here we are. So I'm just going to get some ham in here. And because it's for my dad and it's his birthday, I really do want these to be super just stuffed and like just really like full and enjoyable. So I'm going to try my very best. So that tells me I need to make the top piece a little wider so that I'll be able to fit it over top of all this. So there's quite a bit of ham. And then last night I um, shredded, before bed, I shredded up some organic sharp cheddar um, cheese. And I'm just gonna pile that on top here the best I can. You have to keep a, uh, the edges clear because you still have to be able to close this, uh, the seam around the edges. Maybe I should have put the cheese on first. We'll try that with the next one. That's what we found, Tom and I, with the pizza ones. Way too much bread, not enough ingredients. So I'm trying to do the exact opposite. <clears throat> a lot of ingredient, not a lot of bread. All right, let me try to clean this up a little bit here. Get some of this cheese out of the way. Now, if I were just making these for, like, kids or for Tom and I to just have as like a lunch on a, a weekend day or something like that. I would not put nearly this much effort into it, but because they're a gift for my dad, I really, I, I really, really want them to look nice. So that's why I'm putting in this much effort. That's my cupcake alarm. Um, but if you're watching me do this thinking that is way too much work, you don't have to put this much effort. You could totally just do the fold over method like she did. Um, or you could just, you know, do what I'm doing here, but like care a little less about using the pizza cutter and the thickness. But again, they're a gift. Let's check on these cupcakes. Oh man, these smell so good. Tell me these are not just gorgeous cupcakes. So let me give it a little pat here. Yeah, that definitely still feels like it needs a few more minutes. I did 15. I'm gonna put it in for three more and do 18. Definitely want a nice moist cupcake. I do not want it to be dry like the recipe said. So I'd rather underbake them a touch than overbake them. So we'll do three more minutes and call it. So I've got the top piece of my Hot Pocket here. And here's my thought process. Let me, I'm gonna lay it right over top here. Oh man. And then I'm gonna kind of 
fold under, especially since I have so much ingredient here. I'm not sure that I'll be able to really crease it with a fork very well. So instead, I'm going to take the top piece and like I just said, fold under. And I think that will keep all the contents of the Hot Pocket contained without me having to go through with a fork. Now with me doing that, the edges of the Hot Pocket might be a little thicker, but I don't, with as thin as I rolled these out, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. I don't think it's gonna be like terribly, terribly thick. And again, sacrifice. I'd rather have the edges be a little thick than to have the contents of the Hot Pocket spilling out. So, oh, you guys, it looks like a Hot Pocket. This is so exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and do what I just explained. This is probably gonna take me a minute because I'm gonna have eight of these. And um, that's a bit of work, going through and rolling them out really thin and um, stuffing them as full as I did and all of that. And then there are a couple more steps but we'll get to them when we get to them. So I'm going to um, and work on this for a few minutes. Okay, so I have the first four done. I wanna talk about them for a second. This one was the first one. To me, it looks the most like a Hot Pocket. The rest of these look like giant raviolis, which I guess Hot Pockets are giant raviolis. But um, this was the second one that I did. So this one was the only, this first one was the only one where I tucked under the reason I didn't do the rest of them like that was because I think this one's gonna have the thickest edge, the most bread to get through before you get to the middle. This was the last one that I did. This one I think is gonna have this this one and this one, which was the one before last, I think are gonna have the thinnest edge, but I'm also the most concerned about those having ingre uh, bleed out while they're baking, meaning the ingredients like kind of seep out because there is so little standing between the middle and the outside, but because my dough was so sticky and I didn't uh, dry it out too much, the seams came together really well. So I'm hoping they hold up while they're baking. So we'll see, I'm gonna go ahead and bake these four so I can see what worked best. Before we put them in the oven, I have an egg wash here. It's just one egg mixed with a splash of milk. And I've got my little, pastry brush and we're just going to put the egg mixture on the outside and that helps it to have that nice pretty golden brown smooth glossy outside and I love that I think it looks so professional and just really elevates it so I definitely want to do this step I even put the wash on the edges. In fact, I definitely want to put the wash on the edges because that will just further help keep these sealed and keep them from coming open during the baking process. Okay, and the last thing that you want to do before you pop these in the oven is put some holes for venting. I happen to have a baker's lane because I do make sourdough, but if you don't have one of these, a sharp knife will work fine. And I'm just going to put three slashes across the top and this is to allow steam to escape so that they do not more or less pop open or explode in the oven. This will help them maintain their shape and uh, do what they need to do during the baking process. I make sure that I cut in far enough that I can see some of the ingredients. There we go. I've got my oven preheated to what? Oh no, you need to preheat your oven to 400. So I have it to 350 right now. I'm gonna go ahead and increase it. My cupcakes are done and they're out of the oven. So this is what they look like going in. Let's see how they do. These bake for 20 to 25 minutes. However, I rolled mine out very, very, very thin, much thinner. What did she say to do? She actually doesn't say how thin to roll them out. So mine are very thin. So I'm going to do, I think I'll probably check them at 15 minutes and see what they look like.
so these first four are finished. This one is the one where I folded under. You can kind of see that here. It definitely has the most hot pocket like shape. But these ones where um, I did that other technique where I kind of went around and pressed around the edges and used the pizza cutter to cut them into kind of like a, almost like a like an oval, I guess. I actually really like these a lot. They're a lot thinner. The edges are a lot thinner, a lot less bready, whereas this has like a really thick edge. And so this is more along the lines of what I did for the batch that's in the oven now. So the last thing that I wanna do for these, I have some melted butter here, just a little bit. I rinsed off my little pastry brush there. I wanna add in a little bit of onion powder, totally optional. And I want to add a little bit of garlic salt. I know my dad, I know that he really is a big fan of flavor. So this is just going to give a little something extra. And I'm just going to kind of, kind, kind of pretty sparingly. I don't want to go super heavy on this because they're not going back in the oven. I want to just brush a little of this garlic, onion, powder, butter on top of these. And I think that that'll be very yummy. I'm going to try the one that I folded over the sides because it's the ugliest. <laughs> I don't want to give it to my dad, but I'll still be able to get the flavors. So, mm. this one is definitely the thickest with the bread, but. It's still so much better than the pizza ones that I made the other day. And um, the flavors, very, very, very good. Interesting though, I put so much cheese in these. And I still think this needs more cheese. I put a lot of cheese in these. So I definitely had enough um, dough left to make, honestly, I, I could have made two more small ones. I had enough dough left, but I ran out of ham. So I think I'm probably just gonna set this aside. I still have a couple more cupcakes um, to make. I have enough batter to make two more cupcakes and I want to, but I just wanted to get through this. So I think I'm probably going to roll this out, um, put it on a cookie sheet and maybe I'll make like a, like a pizza round or something like that um, because that's, that's a decent amount of dough. I don't wanna waste this. So I'll do something with this, but we're gonna move on to the frosting for the cupcakes because it's almost 10.30 and I have to, I gotta start wrapping this up. So let's start thinking about the frosting for the cupcakes, which by the way, the cupcakes are right over here. Can you see them? Yeah. Um, and they're nice and cold and ready to be frosted, so. Very good, you want to eat it all? Oh yeah, you can have it, honey. Sure. Yep, that's the ugly one. I'm not giving that one to dad, you can have it. I'm glad you like it. You like them enough for me to like add them to the lunch rotation? Nice. Good. Thank you for your feedback. I'm getting better. I'm learning. Aw. Thank you, honey. All right, you guys, we're moving on to the frosting for the cupcakes. So for this, you need two and a half sticks of butter, and that equals one and a half cups. And um, you want it to be unsalted butter. I don't have any unsalted butter handy. So all that means is I am going to um, not add the salt that the recipe calls for. I want to get my whisk for this. My whisk attachment that is, because the dough hook is not gonna work for this. So I have this already, so you want it softened to room temperature, your butter. And I had it sitting on the stove when I was preheating the oven. So it is nice and warm. And because this is a frosting, I'm using my nice organic Valley butter. Um, something like a frosting, the quality of your ingredients definitely show through in the final product. Um, and so I always like to try and use the best of whatever I have when I'm making a frosting. We're gonna beat the butter on high until it's smooth and creamy which did not take long for me because it was already very warm. I think that a lot of recipes say that because they're assuming a lot of people's butter is gonna be kind of on the harder, more firm side, and it does take a second to get that really loosened up and creamy, but mine was pretty much already there, so this looks great. Now we're gonna add in the rest of our ingredients, and those are the Guinness espresso powder mixture that we made previously. We took um, two tablespoons, 
two tablespoons of the reduced Guinness from the stove and two teaspoons of the espresso powder and kind of mixed it together and got the espresso powder dissolved, if you remember that. It smells so good. We're gonna go ahead and add that in here. That's gonna give so much flavor to this frosting. We're also going to add four and a half cups of confectioner sugar. Confectioner sugar is what really gives us the bulk, the volume for our frosting and it dissolves right into the other ingredients. I have said this before, but I try to be pretty precise with frosting ingredients because you don't wanna play that game where you end up with it being too dry or too liquidy and then you're adding a little bit of um, confectioner sugar, you're adding a little bit of milk, you're going back and forth trying to get it to be just right. If you stick to the, in the directions, the proportions lined out in the recipe, you're usually pretty set and you end up with a consistency that works well for your frosting because nobody likes playing that game with frosting. We're adding one tablespoon of that same cocoa from earlier, one tablespoon unsweetened cocoa, one tablespoon of milk, a pinch of salt, but again, I'm not going to add any. And lastly, however much vanilla your heart desires. So the recipe says to beat on low for 30 seconds and then increase the speed to high until combined and creamy. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The reason it tells you to start it out on slow is because if you crank this baby to warp speed, you're gonna have a cloud of cocoa powder and confectioner sugar and you're not gonna be able to breathe for a minute. So the recipe tells you to start slow because it'll go ahead and start to get it incorporated and you can even maybe, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's already a little bit of um, confectioner sugar dust coming up and if you had set that off into the, the sky it would have just exploded. So once this gets combined a little bit you can start increasing. You do need it to end up on high because that's what's going to really get this nice and creamy. is beautiful. She does say in the recipe that if you want your frosting thicker, you can add another fourth a cup of confectioner sugar, but look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. So good. Tom, I'm bringing you some of this to try. Oh my gosh, this frosting is out of this world. Here is our second batch of Hot Pockets. These are definitely a lot wider, <laughs> but still I think they're going to be very, very good. I'm gonna bring my oven temperature back down to 350 because I do wanna bake up these last couple of cupcakes that I had left over. I want as many of these as I can possibly get. All right, so now at this point, I need to figure out how I wanna frost these. She uses like, um, she pipes the frosting and I think that's what I'm gonna do too. I just, to be honest with you, it's such a pain in the butt, but this is for my daddy's birthday and I wanna do a good job. So I think I'm gonna pull out all the stops. I've got a little basket in my dining room where I keep all of my like decorating supplies. So let me see if I even have all the stuff that I need. I think I do. Here I've got, what does she say she uses? Oh, she's got fancy schmancy stuff. I don't have all that. Let's see here. And then in here, I've got bags. And in case you've never used one of these before, I will show you this bag I need. So some people may think, and I say this because I was one of those people once, that you pull it through like this. You do not. That is not correct. That's not going to work for you. You have to put the tip inside the bag like so. And that's how you have a successful mess-free <laughs> um, time with this. And then I actually am seeing here that this looks pretty rough. So I think I'm going to just take my scissors and clip it back a little bit. That looks decent. And you really want to get the tip in there good because you want the frosting to come through the tip and not through the sides of the tip. Perfect. The other thing that will make your life so much easier when you're doing this is to take your bag and fold it back like this because if you don't, you're going to have frosting all over your hands and it's going to suck. So fold it back like that. And then I just get a big spoon and scoop my frosting into my bag. 
just trying to get as much in there so that I do this as few times as possible. But I don't have really professional bags. These are just plastic ones that I got from Walmart. So I do end up having to refill them. If I had those really nice fabric ones that are really big, I would be able to fit probably this whole bowl or at least half in there. And that's not the case with these, but you may do with the supplies that you have. Someday I'll have really nice piping supplies. I always choose the ugliest cupcake to do first because I feel like it always takes like at least one time to like really get the hang of it and the feel for it. So this was why we folded it because now I can kind of get it like this and you want to twirl it a couple of times because you don't want the frosting. You're going to apply pressure and you don't want the frosting to come back at you this way. You want it to come out the tip. So fold this a few times so that the frosting doesn't have anywhere to go and then you can squeeze it and it comes out. She gives a little tip here to start in the center and move outward. So that's what we're going to do. And look at that, not bad for literally not being a professional and this is my first try. I'm gonna go give this one to Tom so that he can try a cupcake and then we're gonna get to frosting. Okay, you guys, look, if this is not a happy birthday box, I don't know. I just showed Tom and he was like, that looks professional. And I was like, I know. <laughs> So exciting. So we've got ham and cheese Hot Pockets and our Guinness cupcakes with mocha buttercream frosting. Um, Tom and I tried the cupcake off camera because I was too excited and I just handed it to him and we took our bites. So moist, so many flavors, so good. Nothing about it was bad. It wasn't too salty. Even with me using salted butter in the frosting, you could taste the Guinness and you could taste the, the brown sugar and the vanilla and it was just Oh, you could taste the espresso really well. So, so good. I would taste another one on camera, but I've only got three left and I want to bring them to my three coworkers tonight so that we can try them. So, um, yeah, this is my dad's birthday box. I'm so excited. Oh, I think he's really going to love all of this. I get these boxes for about 30 cents from our local. We have a store that sells like spices and like bulk, um, baking supplies and things like that. So I pick up these boxes because they're perfect for like giving gifts, Christmas bo cookie boxes and things like that. So um, you guys, I'll have all of the recipes linked down in the description below. Um, but this was so exciting for me. I'm so glad that we were able to get in the kitchen this morning, get all of this knocked out. I'm gonna be able to give it to my dad on his birthday and I'm done in time to um, kind of d uh, wind down and get ready for work and things like that. So this was great. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. And um, I can't wait to see you in my next one. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward. Bye. Okay, actually, I wanted to show you really quick how perfect this was. I used the remainder of the leftover dough from the Hot Pockets to make this little personal pan pizza. It also used up the rest of the cheese and pepperoni from when I made the pepperoni Hot Pockets the other day. I just had that kicking around in the fridge and wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. So this is perfect because Tom's off today. So this will be his lunch and I got to use up some of the stuff that I had left over and nothing went to waste. And look how cute it is. So that's perfect.